So, just a quick recap as to what we are doing yesterday. We are considering the space spanned by these people x n, x n minus p, okay. when I mean uh, let me make it more general. We had actually the basic space was this you can identify this actually. Span of this, in one case we had x n in the beginning, in other case we had x n minus p minus 1 towards the right. Okay. If we call it w 1 p, okay, we call it w 1 p this span, then uh, very quickly we had these definitions e p f n was nothing but project x n on the space span by this and take the error p 1 p perpendicular x n sigma p f sorry sigma p f square n goes because this is a variance of this variance is what after all x n minus a linear combination of this that is a projection error and those of combiner coefficients are independent of n because of stationarity we know if you do the variance of that again because of stationarity only the correlation values come up from which n disappears. So, that is where this variance is independent of n, it is nothing but norm square of this quantity, this norm square of E f n, E p f n that is equivalent to norm square of E p f n, right. Norm square means variance, expected value of mod square, because that is our definition of inner product. Inner probability x and y is two random values x and y are given E of x y star correlation and therefore, norm means variance e of x into x star. Okay. Similarly, for the backward prediction we had e p what e p b n that time x n minus p was projected on the space, this was not the space that time, this I am considering only for the forward case. For the backward case your space starts from what I mean it is a span of which elements x n, x n minus 1 up to x n minus p plus 1. Those are the p future terms if you are standing at n minus p th point. Is it n minus p at point the p future terms? So that means what n minus p x n minus p needs to be projected. Okay, and on what 0 to p minus 1. Are you following this? n minus p you are standing there because it is backward prediction you are standing there p th order. So p future terms, what are those future terms x n minus 0, x n minus 1, dot 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 x n minus p plus 1. So, starts at 0 delay up to p minus 1 in delay. Okay. This span space corresponding projection, the corresponding error. And again, notation was same thing. Okay. Then I found out an or update relation, update recursion actually it is called order update recursion because update was in terms of p you gave me E p f n and E p b n, question is get me E p plus 1 f n and E p plus 1 b n. So, I am updating it in p, p is the order, so it is called order updating, finding out the same things for higher order. That means, x n was to be projected on the space span by not just x n minus 1 to x n minus p, one more element, what I did that element is x n minus p minus 1. So, net space is what, if you take x n minus p minus 1 project it orthogonally on this, take the error then this net subspace will be for direct sum of or orthogonal sum of span of this and that error span span by that error term. 
okay. and then I projected x n on this with projection on this part, projection on the other part, then take the error and we got an a, we expression for e p plus 1 f, e p plus 1 f n. Similarly, we did for e p plus 1 b n. Just for your sake, I am writing the recursion, we draw the lattice stage also. The recursions were like this. These are all their delta p by sigma p b square, I think. I hmm, will tell you, I will again rewrite what is delta p, though you all know what it is. E p b n minus 1 and minus delta p star where delta p was in a, I mean the E p f n and E p v n minus 1 inner product between the two that is the variance that is sorry the correlation, but the correlation is independent of n again because of society because this error is nothing but original x n minus the projection, projection coefficients are independent of n this also x n minus p minus 1 minus the projection and you multiply those two expressions call products of some x n minus k into x n minus l that kind of thing will come, n will disappear because of stationarity, you get a next term in terms of the correlation of this process, but independent of n, we call it delta p, it is called parkour coefficient. In one case we have delta p, another case delta p star, we denominator these two quantities are real and in our case non negative because no, there is no linear relation between x n, I mean all the samples of x n, so no x n, no sample remains in the space spanned by the rest which means the corresponding orthogonal projection error cannot have a zero variance, cannot have a zero norm. That is why division by zero does not occur. Have you seen this? Division by zero never occurs because no sample of xn, no sample is remaining in the space spanned by the rest. That is the projection error has got a non-zero, that is a strictly positive norm square. That is why these things do not give rise to division by zero, but they are real, positive and real. Okay. So far so good. I said that time that I will start this business assuming that p is greater than equal to 1. So, that if you know in, in extreme case p equal to 1, you consider now p equal to 1, w 1 comma 1 was span of this, x n was projected on this, the error was found, that error you start with, then you want to go for one order up. So, you introduce x n minus 2, the same process. But how about the case p equal to 0? That is, you are starting with the case where you, you are starting, I mean, to go for uh, the projection on the space span by these two. You are starting with what? E1 Pn. But who gives you this? Again, this also has to be obtained recursively, isn't it? E p plus 1, sorry, E p plus 1 Fn is obtained recursively from E p Fn and so on and so forth. You start with E1 Fn, then you go to E2 Fn, so on and so forth. But who will give you E1 Fn? To get E 1 f n you have to start at E 0 f n, E 0 f n means what? That is what we do not know, E 0 f n means x n projected on nothing. When p equal to 1 there is something, p cannot be less than 1, so x n projected on nothing and then the error, that nothing and error you know these are all very qualitative vague terms, is not it? So, we have to see what they are, we have to really get, define separately what is I mean E 0 f n, what is E 0 b n or n minus 1, this we have to define separately. So, using them I can find out E 1 f n, E 1 b n, E 0 b, b n or E 0 b n minus 1 you define using these two, I have to find out E 1 f n, E 1 b n, but I have to define them. You understand the problem now, because I started at p equal to 1 and then I can go for p equal to 2, p equal to 3, p equal to 4 like that, but to get p equal to 1 case recursively means I have to get the case for p equal to 0 also. Is it? But p equal to 0 case has got actually no mathematical meaning because then there is no element, yes? No, 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 no. This is a set, this is a space. I am not considering the space, it is a set, this span is space. Append one more element, set again, this span is another space. But from the set, you are suppose eliminating one element after another, you are left with this. And now you are saying, no, I am not even taking that. You understand na? You want to find out the projection error when x n is projected on the space spanned by this fellow only. That you call E 1 f n. 
Now to get it recursively, you have to start at E zero F n. Now E zero F n means what? Zero eighth order. There is no term. Empty set. Span by uh, space span by empty set and all that. There is no meaning actually in terms of the axioms that I gave. Isn't it? That is why this is to be. This is my way of trading. Books write some qualitative things and all that, but that's mathematically incorrect. Invalid. That's what I'm saying. If you have to be true to mathematics, you have to. Consider those cases separate. You have to give separate definitions. Now, this we know. Hmm? Or you can also draw the structure here quickly. KP I gave, no, I forget the notations, and the other one I gave, yeah, in the previous year's class I called it KPF and KPB, forward prediction, backward prediction, anyway, KP, KP is fine, one will be a conjugate of the other, very soon. This is KP prime, right, and here you get your ET. Okay. You go on cascading it till you have E one F n E one B n. Before that, what happens? That you have my problem, isn't it? So now instead of doing all this by vector space method, let me work out directly. After all, what is E one F n? Means you have to take X n, project it on the space span by X n minus one. Sorry, uh, X n minus one E one F n. After all, okay, and take the error. That is X n minus. When I use these notations, I treat them as vectors. When I bring in E operator and all that, then they are back to their physical form. That is the number variables. Okay. Please understand uh, there is a slight mathematical thing actually. I mean, this uh, what is the in incorrectness in uh, notation because I am using repeating the same XN thing in the vector space form also. I should put a bar underscore or something to indicate that I am treating them as vectors. But I suppose by now you are pretty conversant. So when I am doing them, uh, writing this, using this notation, I am basically meaning inner product of vectors. I am looking at them as vector. Finally, when I replace by E of something, then their actual physical form will be brought in operation. Okay, these times, and now you bring in those forms. What is this? I can even keep it like this. But physically, I know what it is. It is expected value of x n, x n minus one star. That is correlation with lag one. And what is this? This is nothing but variance. Independent of n, so that is n or n minus one doesn't matter. Okay. And what is e one b n directly? X n minus one is to be projected on x n. And error has to be taken, right? X n minus one has to be projected on x n. N minus one that has to be projected on x n one term now only one future term if you are standing at n minus one so x n and the error now you can compare the two this with this and uh, this with this you can say I can define P is zero. You put. Okay, I define now. I say I mathematically correct. I define E zero F n as X. Say everything will fall in place. You just see. And according to me, this is how it should be taught. Some books have the very vague way of saying, "No, I am projecting in space span by M T. That is nothing. So I take the error. I get back the same thing. This is the nonsense. You know, this is has no meaning, isn't it?" Space span by an empty set. What is the meaning of that mathematically? No, space span by empty set means what? There is no definition. Did I give you that? Was it part of the axioms? It's not. Only some physical vague argument. You know that okay, I space on uh, project on nothing, and therefore I get back everything. This is <laughs> these are books, right? But this has to be this way. That you can just see. I am defining. 
that I am really defining now. Looking at this, I have to bring them in the same fold of recursion. What I am doing, this I compute separately. I have to prepare in the same recursive formula, by the same recursive formula. That means, x n, if you put x n equal to f n and as again x n, a 0 b n x n, so that means, this is a 0 b n minus 1. I am saying a 0 b n also x n. So that means, a 0 b n minus 1 coming. Now, delta p, look at this, it should be p f n e b n minus 1, you see, e 0 f n, a 0 b n minus 1, all these things are coming, right. Sigma p b square, that means, norm square of what? e 0 b n minus 1, that is x n minus 1 only, is not it? Hmm? Are you seeing this now? That, that means, in those recursions, I can now start at p equal to 0 and go ahead and I will give the initial condition like this and two more conditions, the corresponding variances also, though I have not done anything for variance as far as recursive way of uh, doing things is concerned, I have only done for uh, this sequences, this signals, not for variances, variance are independent of n, nevertheless, sigma 0 f square is the variance of this guy and sigma 0 b square is the variance of again this guy both are same. So, at 0 stage both are same, that is the reason why they are same for any order, stationarity plus that, his logic was missing that, that at the 0 stage both are same. This is nothing but sigma x square. Okay. So, now I have got this perfect lattice structure. So, what is this lattice? This kind of stages you see, Initially, you have got x n, this is one stage, you know the values, no, I am not writing the values here, it will come, you, you can put the corresponding values with the order p will be 0 in this case and all that is delta 0 and all those dot 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 in general this is a stage typical that is structure. Huh? So, you understand is order recursive structure, it is recursive in order if you want to carry out if you find out projection for one extra order, you do not have to destroy this previous part, you just add one more stage, each is each section is called stage, one stage. Structurally from a circuit point of view, they are identical sections, values of the multipliers and all are different, but structurally they are same. So, you just go on cascading more and more structure this thing, so it is very easy for very nice for VLSI, just you design the mask for this and go on repeating it. You understand, no, this is order recursive, very nice for VLSI, it is absolutely fantastic for VLSI relation, this one stage is to be repeated, structurally same thing you are repeating, multiplier values will be different, this values. So, remember you can draw this structure and all this provided you know the coefficients, is not it? This is the thing which works in real time, gives you all this E p f a n, E p a b a n and all those things in real time as function of n, this is the filter, that is filter it gives you all those things, but provided you know the coefficients, but coefficients depend on what? Those inner product that is correlation between the respective projection errors and the corresponding variances. The entire lattice is defined by this coefficient, is not it? In Z inverse is there, it is a constant thing, plus so what determines the lattice? Only the values of the coefficients and what are the coefficients? The delta p is by and the two variances, right. So, then we should then try to develop computational ways, but what will be given? You will be given only this random process and it is not random process, but it is correlation. I will be giving you the auto stationary process 0 means a and all its auto correlation values for sufficient lag 
0 lakh, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, sufficient number of lakhs will be given to you. You will be asked to construct this filter, that is, develop this multiplier with proper values. Once you have that, you start filtering, extend through that, you will get those projection errors as theory suggests. But how will you compute them? Because then that means you have to compute them. How can you compute them smartly? Because you are not giving these values, you are giving only correlation values. Whereas, what you are getting here in this multiplier coefficients are these inner products of errors and the corresponding norm square of the errors. Okay. So, this is the next step. There is a non real time operation, mind you. This is only a computation back, I mean back room, offline computation, giving a set of correlation value how to generate the synthesize the lattice filter. There is only that computation. Once you synthesize it, implement the filter with those coefficients and work for real time. Say process the same action, you will get those corresponding projection errors accurately. Still, we do not know what is the utility of all this, all this will slowly emerge. You will see what all things it can do. You know, it is one of the most beautiful things that have come up in uh, adaptive signal processing, that is, and then it is key to speech processing, most of the speech work. Anyway, so let us target these fellows, the two variances, because I told you and there was a kind of, you know, I mean, uh, a difference of opinion with some of you as to how to prove that these two are same, that for the backward and the forward, yes, the two norms are same. So, let us tackle that first, then we will come to this delta fellows. Hmm? So, sigma Again, I will say, I will show that I can have order recursion for those variances also. That is, suppose you give me sigma p f square and sigma p b square for some order p, I can get, of, and of course, delta p, then I can get the same things for order p plus 1 also. Okay, people tried and found out, and this is my claim, and I am make, making a claim, and I will just show it is doable. So, sigma p plus 1 f square, I want to find out. Now, what is that? That means p forward prediction x n minus 1 up to x n minus p minus 1. They are spreading a space, project on that, take the error, project whom, project the current guy, take the norm square. And now, I have to bring in some beautiful linear algebra, the kind of thing that you are already famous, used to. Inner, uh, norm square means inner product with itself. But I am sure you will permit me to drop this from one of the two. I drop this here. I keep it extended. It is okay. I have done it many times. This is what? Forward pressure error, forward pressure error for p plus 1 order. For this, I already know the recursion. Is it? That lattice recursion. So, I put that here. This is E p f n minus the delta p thing. Delta p we know, I am not defining it again. You remember this, this recursion I am bringing back here. E p plus 1 f n is equal to this. We know what is delta p and all. So, I am not defining it. This is n. Comma x n. And now, inner product with this and inner product with the rest. First one again, E p f n comma x n minus something, I am coming to that, minus what? Delta p and delta p by sigma p b square, they can come out this part with this now. Since inner product, these co coefficients are coming in the first coordinate they do not get conjugated, they just simply come out as it is. So, delta p by sigma p b square okay. Now, what is this quantity? This is p 1 p and you do not mind if I repeat this here, p 1 p perpendicular on this. I told you I can always bring that back here. After all, what is the physically what was happening? Just to remind you, x n can be written as what? 
as a summation of two component one projection on the space span by x n minus 1 to x n minus p and the error that projection part is orthogonal to this fellow. So, that part will be 0, so only that error part will be there. See that was that I did many times again by the for your sake so that you do not forget it I am reminding. What I am saying just I can take this operator and repeat it here physically what does it mean x n I am writing as a summation of two component one the projection and the projection error. Projection on space is same span by x n minus 1 to x n minus p, but the projection part and this this orthogonal they are cancelling the inner product. So, again that error part will be there is not it. And if I bring it here p 1 p perpendicular x n this will be this same as this, this is p 1 p perpendicular x n this fellow will be brought in here. So, this is the same thing p 1 p perpendicular x n that means norm square of that is yeah norm square of this fellow. Are you understanding this? I do not know how many all are understanding or not. Same thing is repeating here now p 1 p perpendicular x n this fellow I will take I apply the operator here the two percents are same. So, norm square norm square means but for order p. So, sigma p f square see is becoming recursive minus here again what is this guy p Please see, it's little trickier than that. For backward projection, is always E p b n minus one. Again, in case you are confused, what is the for at what index will be standing n minus one minus p? And look at p future terms. You call n minus one as n prime, like yesterday. Call n minus one as n prime. So n minus one minus n n prime minus p is your index. From that, you are looking at p future ones. So what are the terms? N prime n prime minus 1, n prime minus 2 dot 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 n prime minus p plus 1, they are spanning a space on which you are projecting. Now, replace n prime by n minus 1, immediately get this, this operator, are you understanding this? This fellow, what was this fellow actually? Either you remember it always or what was this guy? This guy is, my claim is if you take this, And you have got an extra component coming here, x n minus p minus one. You project this on this span on the span of this and take the error. That fellow is this, isn't it? Because you can always call n minus one as n prime. So n prime minus p, n prime is the current index. N prime minus p, you are standing at, looking at p future terms. So n prime, n prime minus one, n prime minus two, n prime minus p plus one. Then, if you project by definition, that is the backward projection error, pth order for index n prime, that is what it is, but index n prime is n minus 1. So, this is this projection. I have given this definition time and again, but in case you get confused, I am just repeating so that you know you get pretty used to it. And now, this I can repeat on this, I can bring, I can bring this p 1 p perpendicular here. This operator I can repeat by the same logic. Now, do not ask me to repeat the logic again, 2 minutes back I p 1 p perpendicular on this means what for what projection right. So, delta p and this becomes what inner product between e p b n minus 1 e p f n which is delta p star delta p was inner product between this and this now it has become reverse. which is nothing but so you see how nicely recursive it is if you know these two guys and this guy for that laddie stage you know this guy but then i have to find out same for b also after all you need this fellow also you need this fellow also you need this fellow also then only you can get sigma p plus 1 f square but then I must get this fellow also, this fellow also for p plus 1 th order, is not it? Otherwise, so I, I cannot proceed na, recursively. 
So, for this also is the same way we can find out. So, quickly I go through that absolutely similar way just the spaces will be slightly different as you know. So, let us carry that out that is this is your norm square of what sigma p plus 1 b square that means x n minus p minus 1 that is what you are standing looking at p future p plus 1 future term p plus 1 means starting at current 1 x n x n minus 1 dot 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 up to x n minus p then it becomes p plus 1 right that means p 0 Okay. This means I will now jump over some steps. This means inner proc with itself, but in from one of them I will remove this operator. Hear it? From one of them I will remove this operator. Say so let it be like this. And this is what? This is backward your approach backward it is a backward prediction error x n minus p minus 1 p plus 1 is order backward prediction error for index n. Index n is the current index this is p plus 1 that is where this is actually e p plus 1 b n n minus p minus 1 is the index that is where you are standing looking at p p plus 1 future terms is it this is this and I know for its recursive formula, recursive formula I know in the lattice computation simply replace that that was E p b n minus 1 minus minus what delta p star no, I had delta p star that time. Okay. I just replacing this by the that lattice recursion lower branch. I had delta p star for there, hmm? and then this two inner product. same operation what is this again write it after something it will become very mechanical you know similar kind of steps I am doing again and again E p b n minus 1 how does that p 0 to p th order sorry p 1 to very good n minus 1 is the current index n minus 1 minus p from there looking at p future fellows those p future fellows are x n minus 1 x n minus 2 up to x n minus p that projection and this fellow so I will again repeat this on this guy and I get back this guy this was same. So, this part is simple this is the backward prediction error for this I mean the knob square for this fellow because of stationarity this is simply sigma p b square ok. Knob square of this fellow p th order here again this is pretty simple this is p 1 p perpendicular x n this also I will make it p 1 p perpendicular this I have already seen what is this this guy is this is nothing but E p b n minus 1. So, this inner product becomes delta p, okay, this is delta p. So, this is again mod delta p square p 
So, if it is backward, first term is backward in the denominator forward. If it is forward, first term is forward in the denominator backward that way. Okay. Now, I can easily prove that both sigma p x square and sigma b square are same. It is very easily proved by induction. Suppose, up to the order p it is true, up to the order p it is true that sigma p x square is equal to sigma b x square. That is, suppose up to order p sigma p f square is sigma p b square. Then we already found out this formula. This we have already derived, just now we have derived. We have just now derived, and these two are same, so you replace this by again. This guy by this. And this is same as what you got. Okay. The question is in induction, this is the major step, but you have to show that it is true for at least p equal to 0 or somebody. But for p equal to 0 case, both 0 th order forward and backward friction errors were same as x n. Is it? So, corresponding norm square was or variance was simply variance of x n. So, it was true at least for p equal to 0. For p equal to 0, a square is E, which is also same as sigma p b square, sorry, yes, because E p E 0 b n was x n again. So, this is true for p equal to 0, and therefore, it is true for all order. Okay. So, henceforth, I will simply write sigma p square in the denominator, neither sigma p f square nor sigma p b square. So, my notation will be sigma p f square and sigma p b square will go to just sigma p square. There is slight inconsistency in notation, because when I come to x n, its variance I write as sigma x s square, is not it? So, as though x you know quantities in the same domain, they are not, here p means order, here x means signal. So, if you please permit me to do this, okay, because uh, do not p to be a signal and x to be, do not try to see equivalence between the two. Here it only means, because we will be, we will not be mixing up, very rarely will that question come up as to the variance of x n and all that, okay. So, our sigma p square means this, okay. Then comes another beautiful property that is each of the reflection coefficient has magnitude less than 1. Reflection coefficients are what? Delta p by sigma p square and delta p star by sigma p square. Obviously, both have same magnitude you understand now. Denominator is same just now proved. Numerator is delta p or delta p star. So, magnitude of each reflection coefficient in the both the branches in each lattice stage they are same, is not it? Numerator conjugate of each other, denominator same. Now, I will show that they are not only same, they are same of course, but they are all having magnitude less than 1. How many know, uh, of you know Cauchy Schwarz inequality? Have you heard of Cauchy Schwarz inequality? How many? And how is it proved in book? Just tell you do not have to reproduce the entire proof, just tell me how it is proved usually. They do all those things and square up and all those things, isn't it? But I will prove it, the, you see the proof for today and then never forget in life. Because this is what Cauchy Schwarz inequality is. The proof is in retrospect. I do not know. No, this proof is in books, math books, linear layout of books, definitely. I, mean, I have not constructed the proof. I do not claim that, no way. But this is the actual history, this is the genesis of Cauchy Schwarz inequality. Says that suppose x and y are two vectors. If you real numbers can be seen, seen uh, treated as real vectors in a vector space of real numbers, is not it? 
that way. So, this extends to uh, even numbers also. You understand what I said just now? So, even real numbers can be treated because two real number added is another real number. So, close standard addition. Real number into the scalar times real number, scalar is a real itself, is again another real number. So, set of real number is a vector space over itself. So, whatever I prove in the context of I mean using vector space, those are, they are all valid there. But in the case of real numbers, they are much more structured than this. They have got a distance, a lot of things, you know, distance measures, many other things. Hmm. Whereas these only abstract symbols, so very few degrees of little degree, just two operations one abstract plus, another abstract scalar multiplication, other things. Real numbers you can do just, I mean, play havoc with real, anything you conceive of, you can do. Okay. First, it says Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Yeah. Suppose x, y element of v, where v is a vector space, even it is true for infinite dimensional vector space also. What I am proving, I am not using even the finite dimension of nature of the vector space v, v over say c in general, or of course, the c is required, c or r, r is part of c only, real field is a part of a c only. So, whatever I do for c, that is valid for r. But if you change the field into say binary field, field consists of two numbers 1 and 0, that also is a field, modulative field, then this will not work. There will be a problem, I have to define a more, you know, then that is, I mean, high stuff mathematics. You have to define more generalized Cauchy Schwarz inequality for any arbitrary field and all that, that is mathematics. Hmm. This says that if you take the inner product between them and take the mod, this is always less than equal to. norm of this into norm of this. Sometimes books put a square on this and therefore, square and square, which which I, I am sticking to this form, where both are equivalent actually, because you are taking positive mod means positive number only. So, if this is less than equal to this, obviously, square also will be less than equal to and vice versa. Okay. This says that this is always less than equal to, then equality holds If y is, is y equal to k x hmm. or x or x equal to say k y, some k prime y. That is simply because y equal to k x you can always say that means x equal to 1 by k y, but if you take k to be 0, then I cannot write 1 by 0 times y. So, just to take care of that fact mathematically, so this is how mathematicians work. Na? I should always say if y equal to k x, equality holds, but I am adding this extra statement. Why? Mathematically, y equal to k x means immediately I can say, okay, suppose I put k equal to 0, this is true. But does it mean x equal to then uh, 1 by 0? Why that has no meaning. Hmm. How to prove it? This is true means or this is true means y and x they are in the same space, y in the space spanned by x or x is in the space spanned by y. Okay. Suppose y is in the space spanned by x, suppose y Where is this thing? Then only, isn't it? Obviously, in this case, if you really, that means y equal to some kx. You put that back here, equality will be. You can easily see. After all, what is norm y? Norm y means square root of positive square root of inner product with itself. Norm square is inner product with itself. Norm is positive square root of inner product with itself. And you replace y by kx, y by kx, k k go up k, k star, mod k square, x with itself, norm square of x, positive square root, so you get mod k times, is not it? Put that back here, the mod k times mod x square. On the other hand, left hand side you put y equal to k x, k star goes out, 
mod k and x with itself mod of that x with itself no need to put a mod on that is it norm square so that is clearly satisfied Hmm. Understood or not? This is trivial. Now suppose it is not. How about the judging? You have some question? Now suppose it is not. That is why it does not belong to. For this case, equality holds we have seen. Now, suppose this is not, then you have to, we have to show that it is strictly less than. So, in this case, suppose y does not remain in span of x, that is, suppose span of x is this space, span of x is this, y is here. I then project y on this. When you read Kochi Swashing in the books, all these projects are unique, nothing is told because people do not, I mean, they do not expect people to know. But now you know all that. Suppose I project orthogonally on this. Since y is outside, this error or projection error vector will have norm greater than 0. Norm cannot be less than 0. If norm equal to 0 means, this is 0 means y itself is here. But that is contradiction because I said that y is outside the span of x. Logically, y is outside the span of x. That means, if you take the orthogonal projection, projection x is unique take the error, that error is orthogonal to this, this span. Now, my claim is this error cannot be 0 vector, because if it is 0 vector, then y remains in the span of x only, which is contradiction, because I am considering the case y is, y is outside the span of x. Okay. So, that means this error, and if it is not a 0 vector, its norm has to be greater than 0. Right? That means, I am doing this way instead of uh, greater than 0 on the right hand side, you have the norm square of this vector. What is the projection of y on x? y inner product with x divided by norm square of x into x and projection error is y minus that. norm square, sorry, right. This is a projection, this is a pro original, so this is the error, norm square of the error strictly greater than, because y is outside the span of x. Okay. Uh, this, is a, this is just error now, this, is a, this part is a projection, y with x divided by norm square of x into x, y minus that is the error, error norm square, that has to be greater than 0, because y is outside the span. Now, inner pro norm square means inner product to itself. So, imagine that I am writing inner product, this component, comma, again this same component. I am not writing that line. And then term wise inner product. So, what will that be? Y, to y with itself one term. Is it it? Then, This again put a comma, repeat the same thing. This term will come out x with y, this with itself. Nah? So, this second term into first term. x with y, then again this with its right y with x. At this time, this will come up with a conjugate, because this is a second coordinate. I am not showing that extra line, extra following y with this from the first term y, from the second term this, this is a second coordinate. So, conjugate will come up. This is the problem. So, y x conjugate means it will become x y, 
denominator real denominator real of course i should have said that x and y none of them is a zero vector because this is trivially obvious for zero vector because if there is a zero vector y is definitely k times zero vector i mean if this is zero vector this is trivially obvious i'll take that concept later i i case later none of them is a zero vector otherwise you could anybody could frown at this that i'm dividing by zero and all that none of them is a zero vector that i should have mentioned for the zero vector case it is trivially obvious you can just directly put and see inner product is zero and norm of the zero both side norm of the zero, zero vector is zero on the left hand side inner, inner product of one vector is zero that also is zero so equality holds for zero vectors okay it becomes y comma x and then conjugate x comma y are baba this is in the second part y and the second this second this term from the second so this comes out that is why i made xy and last one is plus this with itself so yx and xy yx will come up and xy will come up by square again this square okay and x with itself okay so this is simple algebra here this part is simple algebra this term with itself so from the second thing this will get conjugated becomes xy denominator doesn't change because it's real remember is norm x square repeats twice and x with itself now you see one thing consider uh, this term and this term they are same because inner product with itself means norm x square this cancels with this y x x y by norm x square y x x y by norm x square so you are left with this and this is greater than 0 now the proof is obvious third term i have uh, missed out one one term here third term here there will be one more term i missed out how how, do, how did the third term come this came out no how did the third term y comma x y comma x yes sorry i only looked at the coefficient but the inner product part i did not look at this fellow in the first place this fellow in the second place so this code this thing came out with conjugation it becomes xy now but inner product part with y and x i left out sorry so then what what do you get here norm of y square divided and mod square divided by norm of x square this is greater than 0 so proof is obvious now take this guy on the left hand side and uh, you see the proof is done na okay now look at quickly our terms was delta p by sigma p square okay delta p it's mod i am interested what is delta p delta p was epf n epb n minus 1 and what is this norm square of epb a or n minus 1 doesn't matter right i am interested in finding the mod mod of this mod of this 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 only because denominator is only real no point in real and positive no point in taking mod and all that okay now i apply cauchy's work since i am assuming since there is no linear relation you can see yourself this is not a multiple of this they will not become that is xn projected on this fellow the error and xn minus p projected on the same space and error they will not be you know linearly related in general so in that case still i am putting less than equal to actually it is strictly less than because that will never happen that xn projected on the past and the error and then xn minus p projected on the future and the error they become uh, one become the multiple of the other it's it does it, it's not happening in our case because there is no linear relation actually linking the samples or linking the position errors and all that okay but even otherwise this is always true less than equal to and so this is what this norm is by cauchy schwarz and 
and these two norms are same these two norms are same we have seen these two norms are same isn't it these two same we have proved it so the numerator denominator both are same now so equal to 1 remember this this will be required because i'll be using auto regressive modeling there will be all pole filter the filter will be stable because of this property its poles will lie within unit circle it will stable and causal because of this property of the reflection coefficient okay that's all for today thank you